Support Laneside. Get something cool. Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of The Drill Room. As always, I am the Bearded Beast, Rob Johnson. And uh, as we've said, we're going to be talking about learning how to find your personal bowling uh, characteristics tonight. Learning how to find your tilt, your pap, uh, your rev rate your rotation we want to find the, that information so that you can make better decisions when you're buying equipment going forward so uh we've got a couple of examples that we're going to go through i'm going to show you uh what you can do with uh pro shop tools that you can buy really just about anywhere uh as well as uh going to show you how to do it uh, with things that you have you might have uh, at your disposal uh or at least something that you can make so um, before we get started here, I want to thank everyone uh, once again for joining us uh, in episode five when we had uh, AEW star J.D. Drake on. Uh, J.D. had himself a really great time. He wanted to thank everyone who was there to ask questions and uh, who've passed along questions since then. Uh, and he's looking forward to hopefully coming back on the show again. Um, so... Before we go to the uh, drill room here, why don't we hit a few questions? We've had a few, uh, quite a few questions come in uh, through Facebook and through social media. So why don't we hit a couple of these before we get started? Let everybody uh, have a chance to get here. So let's see here. Do comments is the most dangerous place on the internet. Is the comment section. Right, let's see here. Do, do, do. So from the drill room three, uh, Mekon Stallworth, I think, or Mishan. Uh, love the pro shop talk, but is there any way that we can uh, get through the actual drill parts of the video? Yeah, I know. Um, now that we have the audio pack, it's going to be a lot easier when we do go to drill. Uh, it will be able to cut out the actual sound of the drill so that uh, if Scoops is here answering, uh, answering questions for you, um, you'll be able to hear him, you'll be able to talk back and forth. So um, <clears throat> we've definitely got that, uh, got that fixed. Um, let's see here, what else do we have? Uh, Scotty Thompson letting us know that he really enjoyed uh, the interview with JD. Corbin! I can't imagine Rob in a wrestling ring. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Um, yeah, it was not a pretty sight. I trained for a while. Um, when it comes to being a wrestler, I'm a great, great bowler. Um, unfortunately, my noggin, you know, this this, this chrome dome here is, uh, it sees a lot of, uh, a, a, a lot of impact. <laughs> And it's not so good for me anymore, so it decided that um, maybe, just maybe, it was time for Rob to move on to something else. Um, while, uh, but, you know, get me in, uh, all oiled up with, you know, that uh, Italian dressing all over me and some, uh, some nice spandex there. Oh boy, you're going to be just, whoo! Yeah, it's definitely not a pretty sight. Not a pretty sight at all. I'm just actually kind of seeing if I can... Uh, find you guys a picture here of the last time I was in the ring. Um, I know I'll find it eventually. Uh, it's pretty scary, though. Pretty scary. Uh, let's see what else we've got here for questions. My apologies. Go into the old YouTubes to find more questions for us here. Um, Jim Newton says, Canucks not allowed to bowl anymore. Yep, that's right. Uh, not until Monday. Monday, um, all of our restrictions come off and we get to uh, finally get to go back into the center. Um, we're at a 50% capacity uh, for sports venues, but for the bowling center, that's more than enough to have all the leagues running. Um, oh, Grandmaster Yoda, how will the Pink Widow purple urethane sorry the black widow pink urethane compared to the black widow um that's a really good question 
Uh, I know mine just got shipped out, so I'm waiting to uh, I'm waiting to get it on to the bench there and drill it up. Once things open up on Monday, we're going to be recording four or five reviews at least um, for some of the new stuff that's come out, um, some of the stuff you've seen us drill already. So, but the, I think I think it's probably going to be pretty close. I think it's going to be closer to. Um, see, it's going to be funny. <coughs> Sorry about that. The core, it's a really big core in that ball. I mean, it's uh, 058 differential and 016 intermediate differential. So it's going to be f very continuous for an asymmetric ball, but it's also going to have a ton of flair, even more than we see in the double cross. So I know it's going to be earlier than those, um, but then again, it's a new cover stock. We're getting a new version of the U73 that we see in the double cross. So it's going to be a little cleaner than we saw in the original, uh, Black Widow, Black Widow urethane. And it's even going to be a little bit cleaner than the, uh, Black Widow purple. So it's going to be really interesting to take a look at. Um, I could see it. Uh, even though it's, it is going to be cleaner, um, I could see it being really close to the Black Widow purple. Uh, maybe a tiny bit more shape down lane. Um, but I think it should be... I think it should be that way, but you never know. Um, you never know. Let's see here. Nope, that's, uh, that's me and Ken Anderson. What do we got here? Uh, nope. Uh, there's always so much. Always. I'm looking for that those uh, pictures now. Driving me nuts. Um, what other questions do we have here? Uh, we covered the speed dominant arsenal. Uh, did anyone actually catch the um, the Radical show today? Um, they had uh, Phil and Nick and uh, Radical Ronnie Russell on talking about the double cross. It was really interesting to hear um, Ronnie talk about making the switch back over to uh, the Brunswick brands, uh, specifically Radical, and then talking about how he looks at his equipment. Um, we've talked about several times when we were drilling how you can drill the differential out of a ball. You can dunk the fingers and you can uh, really drill that differ the differential out or you can dunk the, th sorry, you can raise the RG or you can um, really dunk the thumb and change the differential. And he's one of those guys that because of his tilt, uh, because of his the way he throws the ball, he, he likes to drill a lot of that differential out. He actually likes it to, as he said, he likes the ring, the the flare rings to be tighter earlier, so it stays uh, in the oil a little bit more. It retains a little bit more energy. Um, he was saying, like when he threw the Black Widow, the, the regular Black Widow 2.0, the flare rings ended up being anywhere from a half inch to three quarter inch, and because it was so strong and had so much uh, cover stock early, that it would end up burning up on him. So I actually I thought that was really cool. Also, it's always good to hear um, hear Phil just being Phil. Um, <laughs> you know, Phil's gonna be Phil, uh, and it's I I love it because he's unapologetic, and he's gonna say what's on his mind. And he was saying what was on the mind of a lot of people about certain people not liking urethane. Uh, I know one person who personally loves urethane. Mr. Scoops there with his, like, 15-ball arsenal of urethane. Uh, he, is a, he is a man who loves his urethane. Boy, oh, boy, this is really starting to bother me here. I know I should be going over to the, uh, the desk there, but uh, I don't like to leave a question undone, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Um, but for now, I may have to, because I seem to have misplaced. Go figure, I don't have a lot of pictures of myself at, at the ready. 
Um, so anyway, I'll post it on Facebook just for, or maybe I'll post it on the community just for uh, Corbin there. We'll put it on the YouTube uh, channel in our community page. Um, <coughs> speaking of that, if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you go and hit that subscribe button. We've got about 30% of uh, the people who watch our videos are subs subscribed, and we'd really like to get up to 50%. Uh, and in fact, if we can get to 50%, we're going to have a contest, and we're going to give away some pretty cool stuff. Uh, we have a ton of awesome merchandise um, and unusual things that we have procured over the years uh, doing these reviews and, and traveling around, and I, you know, I'd like to pass some of this stuff on and, and uh, maybe give away some jerseys, maybe get, give away some other stuff. So please, make sure you subscribe. And if you're watching this on t Twitch, make sure that you follow. We're just eight subscribers away from getting our affiliate. So please make sure that you do that as well. Oh, I see that Scoops is in the chat there. Can't wait to see myself. Yeah, I can hardly wait. Uh, I, I'm waiting for Scoops to try to wrestle the Pink Widow uh, out of my hands. Um, so, it's going to be a fight. All right. Let's see here. Um, doo -doo. <clears throat> Still waiting for Corbin to let us know how he liked his uh, big bowling stuff. I know he just ordered some of that. Do. Um, now I think I have to switch over to Facebook to get... Now, yes, I did get all of your messages about the 2LS, uh, how the Radical 2H system, uh, the Mo system, has been around longer than the 2LS system. Um, it's just unfortunately with things uh, where we are, it has been uh, more difficult to find that information, uh, where it was a little easier to find the Storm one. Um, and because of Bowl Expo, it was, tr it was taught there. Um, like I said... I'm looking forward to hopefully getting Mikey on the channel here, and he can go through and teach us all how to do uh, the Mo layout system for uh, no thumb bowlers. Um, I think it'll be really good to compare them. Uh, I think it'll actually be really interesting. We do have access to a two-hander that's not me. We actually have a good two-hander. Um, it'd be interesting to drill up a couple of pieces that are very similar uh, using the different layout systems and kind of give them a... a a look, see how they stack. See how they stack up. <clears throat> Other stuff in the news this week: um, EJ Tackett being paid with Bitcoin. That could be good and bad. I mean, really, just because of how it um, how it fluctuates so much. I mean, he could be he could make a fortune or he could lose it. It's really interesting. But it is the cutting edge, and I think that's. In a lot of ways, that's where business is going to be going to that decentralized currency. So, should be interesting to see. Uh, let's go over to Facebook. Get questions from there. Some of them I can't share because they're they're a little more uh, specific to the bowler. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, here's a good one. Um, I had a message from uh, one of our fans here, and he was having a problem. He had seen his average drop 25 pins from 2019 to 2020, and then even more in 2021. Um, and he noticed his ball had really changed the way that it was reacting. And he said, you know, what's, what should I do? What should I buy? And the first thing I asked him is, well, you know, have you had your PAP checked? Um, you know, has it changed? And he said to me, well, you know, my PAP used to be five over and a quarter up, and now it's four and five eighths over and three quarters up and that's a huge huge difference in the way the ball is going to going to perform um that is a significant change in the way that he's rolling the ball so rather than give him a suggestion uh of what he should throw the first thing i told him is well you should go see someone and have all of your information checked again um and then once you know that it's correct you might want to find out, A, why it's changed so much. Uh, but then, yes, absolutely to re-drill a ball. Because his ball, uh, let's see here. Um, the ball that he was using that was his favorite was 42-degree 42, uh, 42 drill angle by 4 inches by 34. But that's at 5 over and a quarter up. You know what? Let's go over to the 
let's go over to the bench and let's actually um, let's actually lay this out on a ball and let's show you the difference here because I think it's important for people to really visualize what the difference is. Um, so let's grab ourselves a bowling ball here. Uh, no, not the AMF ball. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's grab ourselves something off of the wall here. It'll be nice and easy to show up on. Oh, this will work. One of my favorite old pieces from my personal collection. The old conspiracy from Radical. Now then, let's just make some lines on the ball here. Do, do, do. Now he said it was 42. So 42 degrees by four. By four by 34. 34. And his original pap was a quarter and five over. Okay. So his center of grip. There we go. That would be basically how his ball is laid out, okay? With his pap being right there. However, if you look at his new pap, which is four and five eighths over, four and five eighths, Um, so we're going to go do to do three quarters of an inch down by four and five eighths. That same layout with his new pap. So this is new, old. So his center lines here, you see there's a very dramatic change. It's put the pin much closer to his to above the fingers. To give you another idea, might make it make a little more sense. Um, forgot to make sure everyone could still hear me. Hopefully, everyone can still hear me. Um, doo -doo -doo. To give you an idea of the difference that that created in the layout, 42 by four and a half. One quarter. Five. So this is the original layout again. We've got marked on here. For from the original layout, from his original pap, this layout now becomes Right there. 
so this layout now becomes 42 degrees by 3 and 1 eighth. by 36. Boop, boop. 32 by 3 and 1 8 by 36. Not much change drill angle, not much change villain, or um, val angle, huge change in the pin to path. You look at four inches plus, depend, I, I, I know the ball he's talking about, it was a lower differential ball. It was maximizing the amount of flare you could get out of it before. Now at three and an eighth or less, the ball is now rolling earlier. So rather than going down and in, it's rolling earlier. It's being much smoother. He said it wasn't hooking anymore. It's rolling real early. It's a big difference in the way the ball is going to roll. In an asymmetric ball, three and an eighth is going to end up starting to, to retain uh, axis tilt. So if he has a lot of tilt, the ball is going to go down and become more violent, more unpredictable off the spot, um, or could never hook at all just because it never ends up losing tilt. If it, there's not enough friction, it'll just keep going. So checking your stats, Finding out what your tilt, your pap, and all this information is extremely important. I tell people, and I know uh, for our team, um, for Laneside team, we check our information, hmm, I'd say every 12, probably, probably to every 10 to 12 months. As the new season starts out, everyone gets a kind of a little checkup to see how things are going. Um, one of the nice things is uh, one of the nice things is that when we do these videos, it's very easy uh, to slap a uh, piece of tape on the on the pap, mark it out real quick uh, with all our tools, and then we can just see. Oh, you know, it hasn't changed, hasn't moved much. Um, but not everybody has a pro shop, which brings us to today's, uh, today's show. How to find your, your information if you're not a pro shop. So I'm just gonna put this, uh, this conspiracy down and uh, clean up. Okay, so here we have my favorite bonus. And you can see I've drawn some flare lines on it. Luckily, this hasn't really been uh, cleaned since the last time I bowled. Um, so I was able to trace out all of my flare lines on the ball. And this is going to be important. These flare lines are going to help us uh, find out a lot of the information that we need just by marking them down. So you can see here, I've traced the very first line, the very first oil line, all the way out to my last oil line. And I've traced it all the way around the ball. This is gonna give us a whole bunch of information on its own. First, if we measure, you can use a Prosect or a quarter scale, or you can even just use a piece of string or a towel, as long as you have something to measure with. Um, Boop, ba doop, 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 there. There we go. I'm just gonna grab my trusty tape measure here. If you needed to, literally take a towel. What you wanna do is you wanna find one point. Make sure your towel is at least 12 to 13 inches long. Put it right on that first oil ring. Go all the way around to find out where that other oil ring is. Find 
13 inches. So just right there, we have gone and figured out how long, how far across. All right, so we've used this, which is the whole diameter of the ball. We cut it in half. We go from line to line straight across. That's gonna give us a number there. We said we had about 13 inches. USB-C tilt chart. You can look this up on Google. Handy dandy. And it says, the distance across the track of the surface of the ball in inches at 13 inches, your axis tilt is three degrees. So for some of you other bowlers out there, say you measure across and it's 10 degrees. Uh, sorry, so say it's uh, 10 inches across. So say, uh, you know, maybe your track starts here all the way across. Right there, that's 11 inches. 11 inches is 17 degrees of tilt. You can do it literally with anything. I like a, um, something with either a hard edge or no edge at all, like a piece of string, um, a towel, really anything you can use. That's gonna give you an approximation. It doesn't have to be exact. A lot of people get so wound up about, I need to know my exact numbers. I need to know exactly how many revs I've got, exactly what my tilt is. A range, okay, that's what we're trying to find out here is a range. Are you low tilt? Are you below eight degrees of tilt? Are you between nine degrees and let's say 17 degrees of tilt? Are you over 17 degrees of tilt? We want to find this information out, as we've talked about, for those pin lengths to find out if we're retaining it, if we need a ball to retain energy, retain tilt, like a low tilt bowler, if we need it to lose tilt, high tilt bowler, those pin distances will allow us to get the ball to do that. But without that tilt number, we don't know. So, all right, we figured out our tilt here. Let's write it down. Let's grab myself a pen, write it down. We've got three degrees of tilt. That is not a lot, that is low tilt. Next, once we've figured out, once we've traced these lines, we figured out our tilt. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our PAP. Our PAP is our, pre our uh, preferred access point. Basically where the ball spins around. When you spin that ball, it's gonna have two poles. It could be like this, it could be like that, could be like this. But there will always be a positive and a negative pole that the ball spins around. A normal pro shop will use one of these guys, an armadillo, best tool. All you do is you find that first flare ring there and you put it over a ring here and you Basically, you look for the one that matches the shape. So the straighter it is, the more towards the center it is, the more curved it is, the lower the tilt is gonna be down here. Now we're just going to, let's see here, on that right there. And let's, now ah, where'd my pencil go? Oh no, smallest pencil ever, where did you go? It's a sad day when my teeny tiny pencil has run away. <sighs> All right, time to break up the mechanical one, I guess. Um. All right, there we go. These are kind of cool. This is a Doug Heim um, mechanical grease pencil. Um, you can just sharpen the end of it. They actually just come right out. You can just push them up, like, uh, like twirl them up. Makes it really easy. They don't, um, they don't break. Makes it pretty easy for, for, doing, um, for doing ball work. The only thing is you gotta press a little bit harder. Uh, they don't, they're not quite as, um, I don't wanna say greasy, but they're not quite as soft. So, all right, so we've got 
That line there just happens to be on the, on the eight number there. Boom. And see, that is where my pap would be. So when my ball rotates, it rotates around that spot. And not everybody has one of these. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. First one is if you have a quarter scale or a pro sect, and you can buy these. You don't have to be a pro shop to buy one of these. What you're gonna do is you're gonna find your oil line here, and you're gonna pick a couple of spots. And you're gonna, so you can see here, I put my zero on the, the first flare ring. And I'm just going to make a 90 degree line. And already we can see right there, that first line intersected it. That's pretty interesting. I wonder what happens if we go someplace else. And we line it up across that line and put the zero on there. Let's find out. A little farther up. Boom and boom. Put on the line there. Oh, stop. Putting it on the rolly thing, probably not the best thing when you're trying to be a little more precise. Okay, so we go up on that line. Zero or out. And... Huh. Would you look at that? I drew two 90 degree angles from my flare line. You see there, two 90 degree angles, one from the top one, one from the bottom. Bingo, bango, right on my pap. That's way number one. And that's, I mean, you can do it anything that makes a 90 degree angle. Um, the ProSec makes it easier. Quarter scale you can do it with as well. But the easiest way, is for this round, this rolly thing that you guys are probably wondering about. This here is my rev trainer from Eileen's Bowling Buddy. Uh, you've probably seen me use this uh, sometimes uh, when I did that series with Anthony Pepe. Uh, we were talking about how, how it's, uh, you can use it to train different axis rotations and your rev rates and such. Uh, I actually use this in the shop as well. And so can you. Anything that really that's got some roll to it here. You take that flare line and all we do is we want to make sure that it rolls straight around that line as much as possible. And if you roll that ball around that straight line, See if I can do it here. You can do it with a um, ball spinner. That's the word. It's a lot easier to do it with a ball spinner, but not everybody has access to a ball spinner either. And this is a little easier to do. <coughs> so we've got it lined up. See if I can make this bigger here. Bigger, 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 bigger. Now that you can see it. And we'll just rotate it around that first oil line. My fingers aren't very good, but you can see it's pretty much the same spot. Now this has given us our tilt and our pap. Always important to do this with a ball that's been thrown that has your full grip in it. Because you're going to want to find out where the midpoint in your grip is. One, two, three, four. One, two. Now you can find your center line here just by bisecting the thumb and the fingers. Draw a line straight up it. And then just measure from the inside of this to the cut line of your inserts. Make a mark. If you've already made a 90 degree angle to find your tilt, making another 90 degree angle is not going to be too hard to do.
Now, all we gotta do is measure. This is our center of grip with our center line and our midline. I'm gonna measure over, this goes, do to do, six and one, six and one quarter over by zero up. So six and a quarter over from the center of the grip to the pap, and zero inches up the vowel, up and down the vowel line. If it was, say, here, then we would say that there is a 7 eighths, it would be a 7 eighths inch. If it was over here, it would be 4 and 5 eighths. But this has allowed us to, to find our pap and our tilt without even having to go to the lanes. Now, unfortunately, to get your uh, rev rate and your rotation, it's gonna be something that you need to throw a ball. You need to have to go to a bowling center to do so, or have one of these rev trainers. Now, once we have this uh, spot here, we know where our uh, pap is. What you're gonna wanna do is find yourself some tape or something fluorescent uh, that'll stick to the ball that you can see when you throw it that's not gonna come off inside the lane machine. Um, you know, you don't want anything that's gonna easily fall off, but you don't want something that's also gonna be glued there forever. So, a little bit of tape. Just rip it in half. I like using the round half. So you put the center of the tape on the center of where you've measured off your path. Now when you go to the lanes, you can take some video. You want that video to be behind you and low. So you want it to be behind you where you can see the ball come off your hand, it's not blocked by your body at all. And you want it to be low because you don't care about how you threw it. You want to see what this tape is doing. Now, when you take a look at it, there is another chart, another handy dandy USB-C chart. I am a fan of it. Uh, there it is. I think Mo created this, to be honest with you. A lot of this uh, important stuff Mo created. Basically, you can take a video and stop it, and you can see exactly where this piece of tape is. You want to see not only where it is up and down, but you also want to see where it is this way. Okay? So say I'm going to roll it here. You saw it had a lot, it was way back here, but low. So we're gonna say that had lots of rotation because it's rotating. If the ball's going this way and you see it back this way, that's 90 degrees of rotation. That's a lot of rotation. And if you look at the chart, see if I can get it bigger here. Do, do, do. Yeah, this is absolutely Mo. This is off of Bowling Chat. I should have known. All the best stuff is off of Bowling Chat. So you can actually see on the chart here, 85 degrees. If it's dead in the center, it's 90, 85, 80. So you can track your ball back. When you, can, when you can't see this dot anymore, when it's rotating over here, you're getting into the... Um, 35 and below degrees of rotation. And that's the direction the ball is rotating versus um, the direction that it has been thrown in. Tilt. You can actually see tilt as well. See these numbers at the top? The higher they are, the more tilt there is. 
So if you are unable to measure across the ball by at least finding your pap and marking it, you can use the chart to find your tilt as well. Lastly, there's rotation, or sorry, rev rate. So many people are caught up. Hey, Al, John, Diego from Greece. Thank you. Yes, I did find my pencil. Thank you. I appreciate it, Deb. <laughs> Look at the little pencil. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you aren't able to find the tilt by measuring across, just by looking at this video, you can find uh, your rotation and your rev rate. Or sorry, rotation and tilt. Rev rate, as I said, people get all up in arms. You know, I'm 500 rev rate, I'm 600 rev rate, I'm 400 rev rate. Even I was caught up in it for a while. I used to calculate it using frame rates. Um, you can actually figure out how, by taking that other piece of tape, or a longer piece of tape, to be honest with you, um, and going from your pap up above your fingers here, you can measure how many times a ball rotates by how many frames and figure out your, act your rev rate that way, depending on how many frames your camera uses and blah, blah, blah. People are, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you've got a 500 rev rate. It doesn't matter if you've got a 503 rev rate. It doesn't. Um, what's important to know is if you are rev challenged, slightly rev challenged, matched, slightly rev dominant, rev dominant. It's all about matching your speed and your rev rate. Okay, you can you could hit it and have 600 revs on it, but if you're at 10 mile an hour, the ball's going to be in the gutter or it's going to come back and hit you. You know, you can throw it 20 mile an hour. You can throw it 25 mile an hour and have a 400 rev rate and technically you're speed dominant. Like th this, that's why this information is so important to find out just a range so that you can better um, make better drilling choices and better purchasing choices. So why is it important to know this? Well, we've had a few people ask about uh, arsenal construction. You know, oh, I'm speed dominant, I need this kind of, you know, what kind of balls should I have? Should I have more of this or more of that or what have you? Well, depending on your personal bowling characteristics, that will greatly dictate what kind of equipment you need. Somebody who has low tilt, three degrees of tilt. Symmetrics, probably gonna look better in their hands. Their six ball arsenal, four ball arsenal is gonna be a majority of symmetrics because the ball, <coughs> excuse me, the ball, um, it doesn't have such a short hook window. Tends to get down lane a little bit easier. Um, you'll see a lot of low tilt bowlers uh, who benefit from putting the mass bias in asymmetric equipment in their thumb because that actually makes it more symmetrical. Flip that over to somebody who's high tilt, you know, 20 degrees, 24 degrees. They need five inch pin to pat distances. They're also gonna want asymmetric balls put those things together, the, the ball tends to lose tilt faster. So rather than spinning up here all day and just going la-di-da-di-da-di-da, it will actually eventually roll forward. And that's kind of the important thing. We, we talk about the most important thing in bowling to score, getting the ball to slow down. If the ball slows down, it can lose tilt. It can roll forward. It can get through the pins. Oh, excuse me. Um, so are there any questions out there? I really thank you very much. I'm appreciating everyone who's joined us so far. Um, is there any questions out there on anything I've, I've talked about? Is there anything you'd like to see me, uh, see me talk about? This, is, this show's all about you guys. It's, it's our social time, whatever you want to talk about. Um... Now, actually, here's an interesting one for you. Let me show you 
A lot of people ask, in the old days, we were limited to one ball period. Um, we were really lucky because as bowlers, we had very similar, uh, very similar bowling characteristics fit-wise, but um, even though we imparted forces on the ball differently, we were able to use each other's equipment. For example, so we've got five, and a quarter. In the old days, but this is getting back to Josh's question um, that was on Facebook: Why it's so important to get all of your information checked? So, in the old days, we all threw the ball the same, and that, those were our paps. Incredibly close. We were within three quarters of an inch, actually less than that. Uh, I think it was a half inch, five eighths. We were all within five eighths of an inch. However, Scoops has much more tilt. Scoops gets around the ball, so it tilts a little bit more up like this, wanes a little bit more like this, and then I'm very much straight up and down. Um, nowadays, it's changed a little bit. Uh, my stats have changed pretty dramatically over the last year. Um, with all the fitness and everything that I've been doing uh, and all the work that I've been doing with my national team, I've found RJ, you can see mine's changed now. It's about an inch and a quarter different now. It's quite a, it's quite a difference. Um, from what it was, but I have also learned how to uh, raise my tilt. I go anywhere now from about three degrees all the way up to about 10 degrees. Um, so anyone who's looking at going out on tour or thinking about doing tournaments, being able to change your tilt or being able to uh, change your rotation, those are skills you really wanna know. And by being able to find your, your PAP as well, you'll be able to better look while you're training, because uh, you'll be able to see it represented right on the ball. To do. Have you used Life After Death yet from CTD? Let me tell you, the one bad thing about the Dugheim pencils is generally they don't come off. Like you have to really kind of scrub it because they're a true grease pencil. Not with life after death. Like, cleans up good. Ooh, I like that. All right. I think. That's about all I got over here on the bench. Why don't we talk about equipment? Why don't we talk about some of the new equipment that's coming out? <clears throat> I'm gonna switch back over here. Okay. I am back, back again. Beardo's back. Don't tell anybody, they may arrest me. Um, so let's see here. The new equipment that came out or was announced this week. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on the last show before um, with our technical difficulties, unfortunately. Um, but we've got the two new balls out from Hammer. 
Uh, of course, the Black Widow Pink. Um, urethane, it uses the new U73 cover stock, so it's going to be, a, like I said, a little bit cleaner, um, but a much, much bigger core. It is the biggest core in a urethane ball uh, out there now. <clears throat> So it's gonna be it's gonna be a monster. The other ball that's being released, the new three, the twenty fifth anniversary three D offset. Um, I don't know many people who were able to throw one when they first came out. It it just put the um, it put the industry on its ear because it was doing things that nobody else's equipment could do. Um, that core revved up better than anybody else's. It created a shape different than anyone it was looking for, and it, it dominated, like ridiculously dominated. Um, now the new one, it doesn't look like it's multi-density like the original, um, but the original I think was a, f I think it was a four-piece ball, because I think it had two different um, two different densities in that core, or two different flip blocks. I'm trying to see if I can find it here. I try to keep this stuff on my phone so it's easy for for me to find for you. So yeah, 1997 Ball of the Year. so good I know Tom Doherty uh, drilled one up yesterday and he was throwing it um, the shape is really good it's it's a very I don't want to say arcing because um, a lot of arcing equipment is slow it's like a it kind of reminds me of the Black Widow where it has that really continuous asymmetric shape rather than the, the snappy, flippy one. Um, but man, it just, can, it's so continuous. Watching him throw it through the pins, oh, so good. Um, I actually think I have the, the stats for it here. If my phone will, sweet from scoops. <clears throat> um, if my phone will let me load them. 3D offset. So, 2489RG, 053 differential, 008 asymmetric, asymmetric differential. So, technically, um, it's right on that edge of being symmetrical. Because um, anything over 008, I believe, is considered asymmetrical. And then the closer you get to zero, the more, uh, the more symmetrical it is. Um, oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. What else? What? Let me see. Ooh, 3D offset. And then the Black Widow Pink just looks nice. I mean, it just looks. That looks so sweet. It is the neon pink. Excited to see that track Paragon hit the lanes. Me too. Me too. Um, one of the cool things we do, uh, I know Dodge Viper there, I know who that is. One of the cool things we do in our shop here is we have a library program um, where you can buy a switch grip thumb and then you can take any one of the balls that we've drilled for lane side reviews. We actually keep them here boxed so that customers or anyone can come in and if they want to try uh, Brunswick or any one of the seven brands um, they just put a thumb in and, and we'll fit them up and let them go to the lanes um, Dodge Viper here uh, he's one of our regulars and he we, we drilled up a ludicrous for him the ludicrous solid which is really good ball uh, I know that um, old guy Wayne loved that ball loved that ball um, he got one and I think he's got bit by the bug of the, the, the stronger stuff because now he's looking at the Paragon. Um, Paragon is going to be stronger than, than that Ludicrous, which is ludicrous. Um, it's got a little bit more shape down lane, um, but still pretty strong in the oil. So I, 
when we get back here, you'll be able to come and take that ball out and you'll be able to test it out. So let's see, what else do we got here? Do, do, oh yes, Game Breaker 4. So we've got the new Game Breaker 4 in a pearl cover stock. This is going to be a a little bit more than a pearl um, benchmark ball because it's an 048 differential. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have a little bit more flair to it, but uh, it's still going to be really controllable like we've seen out of all of the Game Breakers. It's going to give you more length than you saw out of the, the GB4 Solid. Um, 500, 1,000, 1,500 plus crown factory compound. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get down lane and it's gonna it's gonna hook pretty good. And then, boy, I know I'm forgetting something here. Oh yeah, the new ball from Deviate, brand new core, brand new nameplate, the Collision. That core actually reminds me a lot of the old Twisted Fury core. Um, and, well, just the Fury core in general, that that turned diamond. Um, I, I know quite a few people who really liked the Twisted Fury. I think they're going to really like this ball. Um, this is for stronger, well, yeah, medium to heavy oil. This is a skid flip ball. A lot of flip. Um, this is going to be actually more flip than the Intimidator Pearl, and that's a pretty strong downlane ball from, from DV8. Um, it's actually got almost as much total hook as the uh, Hellraiser Blaze. Like, it's a strong ball. When it gets friction down lane, it's going to make a move. This thing is strong. Uh, 247, 052, 019. Uh, so it's going to want to spin up really pretty easily. 052, it's going to have a lot of flair. 019 is going to be pretty angular down, li down lane. The, the asymmetric, the mass bias, or sorry, the um, intermediate differential. Uh, at 019, it's not super high like the uh, results and maximum results. So it's not going to be like this, but it's going to be fairly strong down lane. Oh, wow, there's GB. There's some. Um Neat. I didn't even know that I had emoticons. I hadn't even looked. Um, so those are the four from uh, the Brunswick family coming out. Uh, we also heard from Phil today that with the Incognito Solid being discontinued and the counterattacks being discontinued, that there is something new coming. So we'll have to keep our eyes out over the next couple of months to see what interesting things, what possibly they can um, replace that the incognito core with. That thing was really good. Um, but he said he's got some. So, <coughs> excuse me, it should be really interesting to see. Um, he also said that there are still mo cores in the pipeline. While we have seen the last one that he designed, there are still more that they are working on. Uh, to bring to fruition. So that is pretty awesome that we still have Mo, uh, you know, redefining the sport even even now. Um, what else did we see this week? Um, you know, we saw the, Shaw, the Sean Rash incident. Um, I think it's been talked out. The PBA dealt with it. Whether you think it was hard, too harsh or not enough, um, I think it was great that the PBA stepped in and, and said that they will that they want to keep the integrity of the sport. Um, scoops, how close will it be to the Twisted Fury destruction? Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna do, do do Twisted Fury destruction bowling ball. Let's bring up the stats on it. Um, okay, so. It was a 258 RG, so this one's got a little bit lower differential. It's going to spin up a little bit easier than the Twisted Fury Destruction did. Um, also, the the Destruction had a uh, 036 differential. This one is going to be going to have a little bit more flair to it. Um, it's going to be a stronger version. 
Let me see if I can find. Do do do. Oh, I hate when that happens. Um, let me see if I can find. Twisted Fury Ball. Because there's a couple of different versions here. That's the Twisted Fury. Twisted Fury Solid. And then the Fury Pearl. Um, no, that's not right. It says the... F oh, no, maybe it was. The f no, the Fury Pearl was not a 2.8 RG. That is incorrect. That is incorrect, Internet. You are lying to me. Why you gotta lie to me like that? Okay, let's see here. The Fury Pearl was a 247044. Um, so it's going to be closer to the original Fury Pearl. Yeah, highly angular. It's probably it's going to have a little bit better length to it though. Um, the Twisted Fury was a 252. Yeah, when you get in the Twisted because of that core, it changed. It brought the differential down just a little bit. So out of the collision, we're going to see a little bit more flare, which means the people who had the Twisted Furies, who had the stronger drillings, we have a little bit more versatility to work with now because they're already a stronger ball. Uh, the people who really like the Furies are going to just be happy. So I hope that answered the question. Um... How good was it to see Norm Duke on the TV show? Or at least trying to, you know, in, in the qualifying there. Um, you know, JD and I were talking about him on the last episode, how nice he is. I really wanted to tell a story, um, a hilarious story from when I was younger. Um, I got to bowl with Norm at uh, Pro-Am as a kid uh, when they came up to Canada. And on the lane there was this other... Um, younger gentleman who was a little brash a little full of himself um quite outspoken and uh he'd already bowled his first two games and norm comes to the lane and the kid is lipping off because as kids you're getting the the third sixth and ninth strike free um and he had shot like 240 250 his first two games and his back is turned, and he's just John and John, and you know, oh, I can beat these guys without these free strikes and stuff. And Norm just walks up behind him and goes, "Oh, you're you're, you're that good, are you? Really? Okay. But well, you know what? I don't want to waste your time here. Why don't we make this interesting? Why don't we bowl? Um, if you win, take you in the back, and, and I'm going to give you an autograph and give you an autograph ball, you know. But if if I win." I get all your stuff. I get all your bowling balls. And without even missing the beat, the kid's like, yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah, I got this. Not a worry. I get three free strikes. I, I can beat this guy. No problem. Norm shoots 279. No free strikes. Just shoots 279. Kid shoots 240. Without saying a word, Norm turns around, walks, grabs his ball off the rack, Walks back, puts his other balls in it, in the kid's bag. So he's taking all the kid's balls, zips it down, picks the bag up, walks out. And we're just like, oh my god. Norm Duke just beat him, and he took his stuff. Um, ten minutes later, Norm comes back down. He's got the bag, kid's bag with him. Opens the bag up, all brand new balls. Norm's grabbed grabbed the kid's stuff to get a span and everything, took it down, drilled him some new stuff, took him aside and said, look, kid, you may be good. One, don't, you know, don't let your mouth write checks that you can't, your butt can't cash. But he said, always remember to be humble. You know, it doesn't matter how good you are, there may at any time be someone who's better than you. <laughs> always one of my favorite stories because, I mean, it was Norm being just hilarious. Because um, him on the lanes, he was treating it as if it was, 
you know, championship game of the U.S. Open, every shot he was just like, ah, he was he was getting fired up, and he taught that kid a lesson. I mean, he could have walked off with his equipment and just been like, nope, that's it, you made a bet. But he taught that kid a lesson. He got him some new equipment, got him some humility, and uh, yeah, I love Norm Duke. Norm is such a good guy. Even Scoops loves Norm. Um, I can remember when we, I, oh God, I think it was eight or nine years ago this week, probably even today, um, Scoops and I were in Detroit at the um, at the first league, and I, I know I don't know if it was the first league, but they were in Detroit. They were doing the league, and we ha I had interviewed Norm a couple of times. I talked to him, and we're walking down the concourse, and Duke sees Scoops, and runs up behind him like sprint and jumps on his back. I was like Scoops. Norm is just a treasure to the bowling industry. Uh, I think eight years ago last week, yeah. Um, for as much as we have talked about and has been talked about across the industry this week about unprofessionalism, um, I think Norm Duke should get talked about. What he does for in the public eye, I think it should be talked about so much more because he's one of those guys who really makes bowling enjoyable. Now, he will mess with you behind the lanes if you're bowling against him but that's that's gamesmanship that's a different story um so what do we got um that that's an awesome story you show him duke that's right um i can say i have my own story of beating some oh yes yes you do um bowling has a way of working with karma, just hand in hand with karma sometimes. Sometimes um, those people who lip off get their comeuppance quite quickly. Um, so what do we have coming up this week? It looks like we have, uh, speaking of the U.S. Open, it looks like we have that coming up this week. Uh, let's just check out the PBA website. If you guys have any questions out there, feel free to throw them on in. I'm enjoying talking along with you. If there's any questions about anything you want, equipment, uh, layouts, whatever. We can even talk bowling. Love talking bowling. It was fun having JR on here. Um, I'm really hoping at some point uh, when the borders open up, when we can get, finally get down to the U.S. Um, without costing us five or $600 just in PCR tests, um, I'm really looking forward to going down and, and say, seeing JD, um, working with him on the lanes rather than working on him, working with him uh, visually, like over, over the internet. Uh, going to see him wrestle, like, oh, I can hardly wait to go see some AEW. Um, but I can hardly wait. I want Scoops to come with me. I'll... Listen here, JD Drake. Let me tell you something, brother. Me and the Scoops man are coming down after you, brother. Um, but yeah, I think it would be awesome for Scoops and I to go down there and like JD and, and any one of the, the amazing performers that he talked about, um, getting down on the lanes there and doing a little, you know, a little bit of bowling, maybe have some fun there. Um, one of the really cool things I'm really looking forward to with this new setup, um, if all continues to work well, we're going to be able to have people call in from anywhere in the world and we're actually going to be able to have them bowl against each other we're going to be able to do matches and do commentary um, and I would love, 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 love to do one of those um, Scoops and I against the other people on here episode 6 social and bowling learn your baffling stuff I was just updating the stream info. Um, oh my, whoa. Internet, why you be so bad? All right, what's this week? That was the Players' Championship. That was also the Players' Championship. Maybe if you went to, you know, the tour, PBA tour. All right, so this Saturday, oh yeah, duh. This Saturday, we've got the championship. We've got the players' championships. 
Who are you guys uh, voting for? Who are you guys rooting for? Um, yeah, we've got what? Uh, I'm trying to remember here. We've got, of course, we've got Sean. We've got um, Tommy Jones on the show. We've got the ever dangerous Belmonte on the show. Do we've got Graham Fa, probably the hottest bowler on the planet right now. Um, he he's bowled in three tournaments since he went to Radical. He's won them, or well, at least uh, led qualifying by a bajillion. Uh, Scoops is voting for Graham or Jason. Uh, it's going to be interesting, uh, just because oh team Bel team Belmo boo. No, Belmos are actually a really good guy. Uh, it's going to be actually really hard to, to choose. I mean, you think about it. Uh, Arturo Quintero. 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 Arturo Quintero. Wow. I just butchered his name completely there for a while. Um, he threw it really good on his show. I don't think he got uh, enough credit because of everything else that's been going on. For a guy who took eight years off, just decided to retire and came back, um, he doesn't look like he's missed a day. He could be the dark horse in this. Um, Jason, if he gets a couple of, if he gets a game under his belt and he gets comfortable, he's always going to be tough. Um, Graham Faw is the only left-hander, and he's going to be able to play urethane. You can't bet against him because if he if he can groove the lane. Nobody's going to interrupt him. He's just going to get locked in and go. So that could be pretty interesting. And Tommy Jones is Tommy Jones. Mr. Hall of Fame 300. And then that other guy. I'm sorry, but Belmo at this point sounds like uh, the Lewis Hamilton of bowling. Gotta let the other lesser known guys win. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Belmo, what... He did take, like, two years off because of the pandemic. He let other people win. Like, he stayed he stayed in, in Australia for two years, and now he's like, okay, fine. You guys had your chance. Let's do this. Um, everybody on that show deserves to be there. Everybody bowled great. You think we've got a bajillion majors and a bajillion titles between all of these guys. Like, this is a really, really strong field. And then after that, what's the week after? PBA Tour. And then the U.S. Open starts on Sunday. Good Lord. Oh, no, it's the week after that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so when whoever's bowling in the... Whoever's bowling in the Players' Championships basically has to win and get on a plane and and go. Like, yeah. Man, that's going to be tough. That's a lot of really quality bowlers that are going to have to get to the... Um, just, sorry, get to the U.S. Open in a hurry and get loose before, before competition starts. <laughs> Uh, you know what, we need to, uh, I don't think we need anybody to come up, because I think there's a lot of good youth coming up. I think that uh, Matt Russo really kind of showed what he could do on his show. Um, there are, you look at some of the guys who just missed the show, who made the show last year. There's a lot of those guys hanging around. There's a ton of good bowlers coming up. And that's not even talking about... Um, You've got the, the Junior Barnes and the Junior Bone. They're all just finishing up school and are going to be out on tour soon. Dear Lord, those guys are good too. There's a lot of good talent coming up. I am glad that uh, I'm old and don't have to bowl against them because I'm not as good as they are. No. Um, there, there's some pretty intimidating talent coming up. Um, heck, just look at our Canadian team. Frankie's not going anywhere. Um, Francois Lavoie, he's not going anywhere. And he is, 
I think outside of Walter Ray, he's probably the best spare shooter on tour. Um, you got Mitch Hupe, who's coming up. You got Zach Wilkins. We bowl with him locally. He is really good. Uh, he led, I think, the Eastern um, the Eastern Players Championship qualifier day one. Like he's a really good bowler. There's a lot of good young talent out on tour now, and there's even more coming up. It's a really good time to be in bowling. Okay. So I think, guys and girls and athletes of all ages, that is about it for today's show. Um, once again, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out and watching. Uh, please remember to smash that follow button on, on um, Twitch. And please subscribe to our YouTube uh, if you're watching us there. Um, like I said, we want to get up to 50%. If we can get up to 50%, we're going to give away a whole bunch of awesome stuff. Uh, but the only way to do that is for you to smash subscribe and to like our videos. Uh, don't forget to follow us on social media. You can go to lanesidereviews.com. That'll take you to Facebook. Uh, you can find us on Twitch. You can find us on Twitter under Laneside Reviews. You can find us on TikTok under Bearded Beast LSR or look up Laneside Reviews. Um, you can find us just about everywhere. Just search Laneside Reviews. If there's any questions you have, please make sure that you like my autograph. Um, make sure if there's anything uh, that you want answered, any questions that you have, send them through to us here. Uh, you can send them through social media or send them directly to lanesidereviews at live.com. Uh, really, we'll talk about anything. We can talk about uh, bowling ball dynamics. We can talk about coaching. The Drill Room is really a show for, the f for you fans where we can answer whatever questions you want more directly. Uh, I find that throwing answers down on YouTube, um, you get such a limited space. Um, and sometimes you're not able to, to articulate what you want to get across to everyone. So I wanted to make sure that um, we have a chance to interact a lot more. If there's anyone you'd like to see us uh, interview on the show, please also send that in. Uh, we're going to start trying to uh, set up some interviews like we did with J.D. Drake, um, whether it be professionals or amateurs or coaches, whoever you would like to see. Just let us know and we'll try to set it up. So, um, done. no Pink Widow for scoops. No urethane. Nothing for you. All right. So unless there's anything else there, let's wrap it up. like to keep them, as I said, around an hour, uh, hour and 20 minutes. Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. Uh, we're going to go a little later on Tuesday. We're going to uh, start just after 7 o'clock, and then uh, we'll pick things up from there. So until next time, guys, we'll see you lane side. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a show. So until next time, guys, we'll see you lane side.